Dear all, welcome to this new tutorial. Let's discover Inkscape, a great free solution to make professional vector drawings for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux computers. In just 11 minutes, we will see everything you can do with Inkscape as a beginner. Inkscape is a vector-based drawing software that works with SVG files, or scalable vector graphic files, that are often used in web development. SVG files describe graphics with a textual markup language readable by web browsers and very easy to manage and compress without losing quality like standard JPG and PNG bitmap files. When you open Inkscape, this starts from a blank document on the center, several drawing tools on the left, and useful panels and options on the right that we will see. On top, you get the main bar showing properties and options for the current tool enabled or object selected. There is also a dark theme you can select by going to Preferences, and then to Interface Theme. Before working, you may need to adjust the document page size with document properties. Just select the standard template to use and the measurement unit under display units above. Now let's see how to draw on Inkscape with several tools on the left side. You can drop rectangles, ellipses, regular polygons, and stars by clicking and dragging on the document. You can also draw 3D cubes and spirals in the same way. You can also adjust size, corners, and shape type on top. You can enable other tools to realize custom shapes and paths. With the Bezier tool, click to fix several vertices and drop consecutive segments, whereas click and drag to define tangents to curves with very good precision. Then close the shape or double-click to apply. Use the options on top to change the drawing mode, such as Spiral Path to drop arcs and circles, and B-Spline to drop B-Spline curves. Use the Freehand tool to drop segments by clicking twice or draw freehand by clicking and dragging on the document, whereas Enable the Calligraphic tool to draw artistic paths, correcting trace properties on top. With the Text tool, you can drop text and annotations. Click and drag to create a text area and then type in. If you overcome the text box, this becomes red in color and hides part of its content. In this case, just extend it as much as you need to show all. On top, adjust the font family, style, size, distribution, spacing, and orientation, and set the text color from the complete list at the bottom. These changes affect any selected text if you have. Use your mouse wheel while holding down the control key to zoom in and out. You also have several graphic aids to make precise drawings such as the horizontal and vertical rulers, showing your cursor position on the document, and several main guides you can drop by clicking and dragging from the rulers. On the extreme right, you can set all the snapping options. You can turn on and off all snappings, or choose to consider several object key points, such as paths, intersections, cusp and smooth nodes, midpoints, and more. You can also go to View, Split View Mode, to move a separator that shows or hides all object fillings and strokes to catch the vector skeletons. Now, let's see how to edit objects with the Select tool enabled. Click on any object to select it, and click and drag it to move it. This shows its dashed box and several nodes you can use to scale the object. Hold down the Control or Command key to save its aspect ratio. Click once again on the object to rotate and skew it instead. Use Control or Command and X, C, and V to cut, copy, and paste. 
you can always undo with Control or Command and Z. Moreover, if you double-click on the object, you enable the corresponding drawing tool. For example, the Rectangle tool if you double-click on any rectangle, or the Spiral tool if you double-click on any spiral. At this point, you can drop another object or correct the current one by moving its white nodes. Whereas, if you double-click on any curve or artistic path, you enable the Edit tool, which can be used on several objects. Drag white circles to adjust curves, white squares to correct straight lines, and white rhombuses to make complex adjustments, such as the extrusion length of the 3D cube. On top, you can transform the selected object, rotate it by 90 degrees, flip it horizontally or vertically, and adjust its visibility in case multiple objects overlap. Also, set the object position, width, height, and click on the lock button to save its aspect ratio any time. To adjust any object or text appearance, you can open the panels in the bottom right corner. With Fill and Stroke, you can add any filling with Fill and any stroke with Stroke, Paint, and Style. You can apply any solid color and any linear, radial, or pattern gradient to both the filling and the stroke independently. You can also enable the Gradient tool to manage the gradients by moving nodes or clicking and dragging over the object. Make sure to select any node to change the gradient color and pick any color at the bottom to fix the overall background color. You can also add blur and transparency at the bottom. When selecting text, the fill represents the text color and the stroke the contour around each letter. Also, in this case, you can apply gradients as you like most. If you click and drag on the document, you can select all the objects within your rectangular selection area. This way you can move, scale, and rotate these in one move. You can also right-click and go to Group not to perform the selection every time. In addition, you can select multiple objects and open the Path tab to apply several Boolean operations to unify, subtract, and combine objects in several ways. Inkscape includes other advanced tools you can use. Enable the Spray tool to drop multiple copies of a selected object as you brush, and the Tweak tool to move or deform selected objects and text according to the options chosen on top. Inkscape can also manage bitmap images, such as files rendered in pixels. Go to File, Import, and browse for the image. You can include it within your document with Embed, or add it as a link to keep your document small in size. You can move, scale, and edit the image as seen for other elements. In addition, you can go to Path, Trace Bitmap, to convert the image into a group of vectors if necessary. With Inkscape, you can also apply special effects by going to Filters, Filter Editor. Extend the panel and go to New to define a new filter. Then select the effect to apply and click on Add Effect. Make sure to enable the current filter to check the effect result on the object. You can also apply several effects in series and drag and move any effect to change their order. Each filter is indeed a group of effects applied in series. These are saved for the whole document and can be applied on any object or group singularly. You find several filters ready to use within the Filters tab. Inkscape also includes an XML editor to check the resulted code of your SVG document in progress. Very useful in case it must be opened by browsers on the web. You can also right-click on any object and go to Object Properties to check and change their ID selector associated, 
or at interactivity functions to make the object responsive when clicked, on click, hovered with your cursor, on mouse over, and so on. These require coding under a Smile, CSS3, and JavaScript formats, but we won't see these in this beginner tutorial. Please check our video description for additional resources about this. Now let's see how to save and export your project. Go to File, Save As. To save the document as an Inkscape or plain SVG file that you can open and edit again with Inkscape, or export directly for the web. You can also choose a low size SVGZ file or a PDF to print your document. You can also render your document into a bitmap file with File, Export PNG Image. Choose Page to export the whole document. Drawing to export just the document area filled with objects and selection to export just the selected objects you have. The white document background will be rendered completely transparent. Thank you very much for watching this super short tutorial. Visit our YouTube channel and our official website for more amazing free content.